The last few years, one of the number one calls that our extension educators receive is about a problem on pears. Uh, this happens to be an edible pear, but this could also be an ornamental pear problem. If we look at those leaves, you'll notice that there are leaf spots or blemishes, and sometimes it can be excessive. This is actually to, due to a disease called pear rust. And there are at least three different gymnosporangium species that can cause this type of damage on the pear tree. Just looking at it, we can't tell which of them it is, but the management is the same. Now, I am relatively certain that the infection period for the most common pear rust, Asian pear rust, starts very early in the spring, basically from the time this pear tree put out its first leaf. And for cedar hawthorn rust and cedar apple rust, the timing may be a little bit later in April, um, possibly even into the first week of May. It's somewhat weather dependent, so in a warmer spring, we may see things a little bit earlier in the month. In a cooler spring, we may see it a little bit later in the month. This disease, the way it got here is I live uh, out a little bit on the edge of the country and there are a lot of juniper or cedar trees uh, less than a half a mile from me and these cedar trees will produce different types of rust galls. So this is the rust gall of cedar apple rust. They are the biggest. Uh, this one's still just a smaller version of cedar apple rust. We also have cedar hawthorn rust, which is still that circular shape, but a lot smaller. And then this one that is a little bit less obvious, I believe, is Japanese or Asian pear rust. Um, this is a newer rust that we've only found in Oklahoma the past few years, so we don't know a lot about it um, in the sense that this is probably the first year where I've seen noticeable lesions on the cedar trees. In the early part of the spring, so late March or April, these areas on the cedar try, start to wake up and are exuding these orange masses. So these are the rust spores, uh, the fungal spores that are going to blow to the alternate host, which is pear, apple, hawthorn, quince, many plants that are in the rosaceae plant family. Um, and they land on the leaves and start these infections. So this is what it looks like in mid-April. We will continue to see these lesions enlarge. Uh, they may coalesce. A leaf that has a really high number of spots may actually def defoliate. The plant may just choose to drop that leaf due to the amount of damage. On leaves that have less damage, you may see those leaves persist all the way through fall. Uh, later in the season, we're going to see that on the underside of the leaves, right now, they're basically little um, bumps, almost like little blisters or pimples. These are going to uh, usually in June or July start to look a little bit different. They, there will be little projections or tubes that spores are going to tumble out and blow back and infect the juniper or cedar trees, the juniper species. The question is, do I need to worry about applying a fungicide for this disease? And it's a little bit unknown in the sense that this is, if this is in fact Asian or Japanese pear rust, we don't know as much about this disease as we do cedar apple rust and cedar hawthorn rust. For those diseases, yes, it is helpful to make a fungicide application in the spring about the time the leaves emerge or uh, even 10 days after. Um, and the main goal is to protect that foliage from more and more blemishes. As we move into May and June, you're gonna notice these shoots are gonna continue to expand. And you may notice that the leaves at the top of the branches are blemish free and the lesions will be further down, just indicating that infection cycle earlier in the year. Um, so 
Once we get out of April, you wouldn't need to make any fungicide applications. For this tree, since it's an edible pear, I do have some pear fruits on here. And I know that it's the time we're filming this, it's still April. So I want to protect those pear fruits. Um, for an ornamental pear, I may not be as worried about that unless you find these lesions just unsightly and want to prevent them. Um, so my goal, if I were to make a fungicide application now, would to protect any new infections, but it's not going to cure what's already has the problem. Uh, it's always important when you're thinking about fungicides to identify your pear as either uh, a fruiting edible pear or an ornamental pear. Your choice of fungicides may vary uh, depending on if you're going to be consuming the product or not. And since every garden center may have a different offering, it is better to visit your garden center and communicate with your county extension educator for the best products to use on your trees. These are a couple of the products that uh, you will commonly find in garden centers in Oklahoma. You can also treat the cedar trees, but the time to treat the cedar is in June or July, not early in the spring. We want to wait until those little projections develop on the underside of the leaves. That's the time we're worried about the disease cycling back to the junipers. One other thing about the junipers, they spend about 18 to 20 months is how long these develop on the juniper. So just because you spray this year, it may be two years before it's actually realized if that was effective. I also want to point out that different pears may have different susceptibility to rust. I have uh, three different edible pears and an Asian pear um, in my landscape. I think this one is a bosque. There, we also have a Bartlett and a kefir, and this is definitely the most severely affected. Uh, some of the other pe uh, pears that we have have a lot less damage. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.